Hi guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench once again. Yes, all stubbly. I think about growing a beard to keep the face warm in the winter. We shall see. There's grey beard, look at that. Um, getting old. So, if you're one of those people that don't like boxes, then you might want to turn off now or just fast forward because I'm going to talk about a couple of boxes. Yep. So, last night, I was over on Peter's channel, Oz Scale Modeling, he did a live stream. He doesn't do a regular time, I don't think. But uh, last night, Thursday, I think it was about seven o'clock, or maybe eight o'clock, he did a, a live stream and um, very good. I enjoyed, you know, having gone on there and uh, he just sits there in his living room with his modeling bench behind him and talks models and it's great. And uh, there's a sort of, there's a chat going down the side and he reads every comment and answers questions and stuff and people chat amongst themselves and it's uh it's it's great just to join in with him but remember it's australia so the the hours are i think they're nine hours ahead aren't they i think so um yeah for us it, for him it would have been friday morning but yes friday's off now so he gets a long weekend every weekend so he does a live stream and that's good and also he is well he's actually already started in a way um his one two hundred scale yamato so that'll be well worth watching because he's a bloody good modeler and it would be great to see. Um, he hasn't gone for the Pontos detail set because it's so bloody expensive and it's not necessarily expensive. It's just that the pound is the dollar is so strong and everything else is so weak. So, you know, it's three hundred and sixty five dollars, which in normal times would be, you know, one hundred and eighty, maybe two hundred pound, which for a. A photo etched set for a ship with deck and everything that's how much they are ship models are expensive you know um that's how much i was, I was looking today at, at, on a modeling site and uh, a 350th scale japanese like kag or whatever 200 pounds it's like what you know it's, it's only this big it's not it's not a massive ship 200 quid and that's fujimi it's not like it's tamiya premium or anything it's just a fujimi kit i don't think it even has any photo etch so yeah, it's a lot of money. But anyway, um, I was on there last night and uh, I'm waffling and uh, Peter said, Rigel, Hibbo's been asking me, you received a box, didn't you? And Hibbo did actually ask me on one of my videos, he commented, and I said I did receive a box from Australia. And apparently within this box is beer and it came in September. It's now December, it came in September. And here's the box, just to prove, okay, there's the box unopened. OK, it's all still sealed. Australia Post. I haven't opened it. And because they've said it's beer, I'm going to save it for Christmas. I will open it on the channel um, because there may be something funny or rude or whatever in there. Knowing Simon, there's probably something in there that's um, rude or funny. So, uh, yeah, apparently in there is beer. It's been sat on the landing since September and I haven't opened it. Basically, uh, as you know, my channel went a little bit quiet for a little while. Enough about that. Right, so there we go. And also, um, another box came. It's very similar time. In fact, on this one, it says, did I just see it? Yeah, 2nd of September 2022. And I put that box on top of it, so it must have come just after. So this one's 2nd of September. And in here, this is for models for sale. And there are two kits in here, and I can't even remember what one of them is. I know one of them is the 35th scale Yamato second turret, which is a big old model, I think. But um, I'm going to get this box open and have a look. So that's going to be a review of that kit. Well, I'll also say in a minute what the other one is. So I'll get it open and then I'll be back. OK, so beautifully packaged, all wrapped in paper, a bubble wrap and everything. Models for sale. Great company. Go and have a look at their website. Um, they do some amazing prices on some kits. So basically the other kit was this one. No, that was the first one. So this is the first one. This is what I'm going to review now. So this is the uh, Yamato secondary turret. So this is the one that's sitting up behind the, um, the main turret. You can't see it there now. Uh, but the, you've got the two, you've got the front, the first turret, the second turret, and then this sits up behind that one. And then there's another one on the back, which is just in front of the third turret. So uh, beautiful, beautiful thing. So uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. It's a big, big box for a bloody turret. And remember, that's 35th scale, not 72nd. So I don't think they do a 72nd scale one of that. I think they probably will. 
I don't think they do yet. And then this one, much smaller box, this is the other kit. I'd completely forgotten I got this. Um, Andy Richards messaged me and said he got one. And uh, I thought, well, I'll have a look at that. And there it is. So that's the um, Missouri Battleship number one turret. So we'll see how big that one is. I must get on and finish that Bismarck one. It's nearly done. So this box is sellotape closed, so we're not going to open it. But you can basically see what's in there. It's going to be very similar. Shame it's just a square lump of plastic, the base. And uh, one thing I want to look at is the planking, because um, I think you'll find that on Missouri, as she sat now, they've got like scaffold planks on the deck, protecting the wooden deck. And I'm wondering if they've done the same on here, if they've used the really wide decks. That was something Andy and I were discussing, but uh, should be a very interesting looking model. I've seen no reason why you couldn't actually build it as an Iowa turret if you wanted to. I don't think there's much difference, but it's a fairly featureless turret in comparison. You know, with the, the Yamato, if you look at it, it's fairly sort of featureless. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this one, this big beast here. So we'll get to the bench, and yeah, we'll have a look around the box. So we can talk about some more boxes. So that's one, two, three, four boxes in one video. You'll be loving me, you lot. <laughs> okay, so here we have the beautiful box. And if you notice, we've got no glare. I'm actually reflecting the light off, a, off the wall. So it seems to be working, we have no glare. So, um, lovely glossy box, big box, you can see how big it is. You can see my hands on there, it's huge. It's almost as long as my forearm, look at that. Um, and it's also very deep. So here we have the Battleship Yamato, third year type, 60 calibre, 15.5 centimetre gun turret. Uh, these, it says two in one, I don't know why. It says two in one, and there's only one type of marking, but I'm not sure if maybe we can build this as, they call them turrets three and four. I guess that's because they're in the third and fourth position, although they are secondary turrets, so they're not to be confused with the big 46 centimeter um, that's on there. These are the 15.5 centimeter. They're actually Nendoshiki turrets, and apparently were the best turrets used in the Second World War. Best in what way, I do not know. But they came from Mogami. Uh, Yamato originally had four of these uh, and then had two of them and I can show you on the side here this is the uh, beautiful book uh, Battleship Yamato and Musashi by um, Janusz Skolski and Stefan Draminski uh, great book a lot of people say there's not a lot of information available for Yamato but as the years have gone on more and more has become available so you have to trust a source of information and this is my source of information uh, I've, got, I've got a couple of Japanese books as well uh, which I will look at when we come to build the model. But here you can see we have, there's the two turrets there on the sides. So there's positions three and four, and then there's those two there. And then as the years went on, they got changed. I also found a note in this book that apparently in 1943, uh, you can see the turrets are still there. Musashi had them as well, in 42. And then you can see the structure started to change where we got the, what we know now, what we see commonly with the guns around the side. So yeah, apparently sometime in 43 there was some armour added. So basically there it is there, 15 and a half centimetre, uh, and this is a 35th scale kit, so it's going to be a big old beast. So you can see on the side of the box there, we have the, um, the lovely CAD images of the model. We can see the actual turret base there. There's no depth with this one, it's just actually the, the barbette that sticks it up above the, the other one. End of the box, we've got the same sort of image that you've got on the top of the box. And then around the other side, typical Takam style, we've got the uh, contents of the kit. Looks like a fairly decent kit. We've got a tiny little photo etch and some chain there. And then here we've got the, um, the Yamato 46 centimetre gun, which you know we've built. And we've also got the Bismarck turret there in 72nd scale, which we haven't quite finished yet. And then the other end of the box, same thing again. So you can see it's still sealed. I haven't opened it. So we'll get it open, and typical Takum style, the box is just falling apart because the lids on these boxes are generally very thin, but the actual boxes themselves are generally very good. You can see it's all just falling apart. So we'll have a look in here and see what we've got for our money. So there we go. So there's a lovely big box of sprues. So we've got some sprues in there, we've got some lovely plastic railings, thank God they're not photo etch. So they're really nice. We've got the uh, part of the base there, which is like a bloody great big soup bowl. Oh my God, this thing is huge. There's the, uh, that's the roof of the turret. There you can see my hand on there. It's big. 
There's the base and another part of the base there. I've already got some sprues here. I've already got our barrels, which are two pieces. Oh no, we're going to have to glue two pieces of plastic together and make the scene disappear. <laughs> and then we've got the sides there. And then we've got the, um, the blast bags there. Again, they've done it. It looks like you can have them up or down. And then we've got the, the actual sides there. And then there's the base of the turret in its own protected uh, cling film, uh, cling film, bubble wrap. So that's an unusual, that's, that's a similar sort of size as the um, the uh, turret in 72nd scale of the um, of Bismarck. And then in the bottom here we've got the instructions, no decals or anything, we've got some chain, which looks very nice indeed. And we've got some tiny, tiny little eyelets there in photo etch. So I'm going to get the light sorted, get the camera sorted, and then we'll have a look and see what this kit is like. Okay, so here we have the instructions. It's a typical little sort of almost A4 sized book. There's some history all about the um, about the guns and what it was used for and everything. So if you want to read that, there we go, I'll put that up there and then you can pause it and have a read. There we go. So um, typical Tacom style instructions. So we've got some tips and pieces there. We've got the two colours, dark grey, AMT12 and bone, um, the MIG, MIG colours there, that's the only two colours you need. The bone is going to be an off-white colour for the uh, blast bags and then the grey is going to be for the actual turret itself. And I would thoroughly recommend you get to your Tamiya stockist if you're going to build this and get some LP12. I've got air on there because it's pre-mixed. This stuff is beautiful. If you want to see how nice it is, go look at my... Um, Turret build for the Yamato number one turret. It just go, It doesn't need any primer and it just goes down silky smooth. It's absolutely gorgeous paint. So in here we've got the uh, parts call out there. So we do have numbers on the sprues as well. And then going into the um, instructions here, we're going to build up the main body of the turret. So we've got the base, back, sides, and then the wings going on for the range finders. Building up the top. And we've got some armor plating going on here. I guess this is the armor that was added in 43. Uh, we've got the range finders going together there, and then it's telling us to drill some holes, gonna add some armour to the rear with some entrance doors, and then I'm guessing that's entrance doors or maintenance doors, whatever. And then we've got the um, covers going on the range finders there, and then armour going on the sides. And then we've got the top, this is the armour plate going on the top. Uh, so we've got what looks like probably a periscope there, we've got some little railings going in here, it's telling us to drill some more holes. I'm not sure if we're going to get the option in here to have the three or four turret, I'm guessing it's just number three. Uh, and then we've got some stanchions there by the look of it. Go again, so we are gonna have railing to add the same as, or maybe it's chain, the same as the um, Yamato um, number one turret. Maybe that's where the chain's gonna be used, that'll be nice. And then we've got the uh, range finders um, covers going on there. Looks like we don't have the option to have them covered up. Maybe there isn't an option to have them covered up in real life. Building up the mass there that's going on the top. If you saw my review of the Pontos set, all this is replaced with brass. It's beautiful in the 200 scale. And then we've got the um, the blast bag um, uh, rails going on there. I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they're railings that stop the blast bags all flapping about. And then we've got the railings going on the side there. All moulded in plastic, which is nice. I can't stand using photo etch for railings and stuff. It's never right. It's, it's too, too two dimensional. Uh, and then railings going on the back there. And we've got the uh, catwalk going around the back. And then more railings going on the side. Blast bags, building up three barrels. You've got a separate end, which is nice. So that'll probably be rifled. And then we've got the option of having the guns down or up. I will always go with the guns down, which is very nice. And then adding the guns in there. And then it looks like they've done the better... It's better than the same as Buzz Bismarck. The, the guns are actually glued in with their blast bags rather than having them mounted. And then we've got the plastic strip going around there for the armor, for the uh, belt, for the armor. And um, that look very nice. And then we've got some more strips going in there. And then we've got the armor plate going in there underneath. And then basically adding the turret to the base. So this is going to be a very, very quick build. You're going to build the whole thing probably and paint it. Um, I didn't notice on here. Were they telling us to use chain? I didn't notice it in here. Okay, it's just giving us some, it doesn't say use chain, it's just giving us some lengths. 
So I'm guessing that is chain. So I'm looking at the front of the box. I'm guessing it's chain. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then when we get to the back of the instructions, mounting the turret onto its base, and then you've got your colour callouts there for your third year type gun turret. So um, lovely little turrets. They came from Mogami because Mogami was refitted with uh, bigger guns. So um, if you're into your Japanese ships, then you can have a bit of a, a, a sort of follow through there. You can have build a Mogami and as she was with the smaller guns and have her next to Yamato. So, um, but there isn't a 200 scale or a 35th scale Mogami. 35th scale Mogami, now that would be something else, wouldn't it? But this chain is lovely. I'm not going to get it out. It's very, very fine, beautiful chain. So lovely there. And then we've got this little photo etch, which looks like eyelets, little lifting eyelets. So very nice indeed. Let's start have a look at the kit. So here we've got the, the base. And that's um, very thick, very hard. Why does it rattle? It's actually two pieces of plastic. Okay, so there we've got that. I was wondering why it was rattling. I thought it was one piece. We've got that base there, which bayonets on onto there. So uh, two pieces in there. I thought it was just one. A little bit of damage on there. That'll all be sorted when we uh, when we put it together. We will be building this. It'll probably be a one or two video build, but we will be building this on the channel very soon because. Uh, I really do enjoy these turrets, but I think I should f finish the Bismarck one first, shouldn't I? Um, so here we've got sprue. Which sprue is this? This is sprue A. Got some lovely moulding on here. We've got some beautiful rivet detail. You can see on there, very, very sharp, very crisp, typical Tacom style. Fairly small um, sprue mounts as well for Tacom. You've got these lovely ladders here, all moulded in plastic, which are gorgeous. There's going to be a little seam line around there to clean off, but nothing much. Very crisp, very clean molding. Really, really nice. So, and that is lovely tech. It's going to take a wash beautifully and then some streaking and stuff. But um, it's best not to go to town on these because, you know, with ships, were they beaten up? Were they not? It's hard to tell. But, um, I've got some pictures of Yamato looking beautiful. I've got some pictures of her with uh, looking a right mess. But there we are. I think she looked a right mess after she, there was one of the missions she went on. They painted the decks black and I think they used soot and then obviously it washed off and went down on the side of your heart. It's awful. But uh, last bag's there. Very nice indeed. I'll tell you who's going to get this. James Mower. James Mower to boldly go models. He's got a website, a channel, sorry, on YouTube. Go and have a look. There's some beautiful builds on there. He's currently building a Sabre, I think, from Airfix. Go and have a look at that. And, uh, but James Mower, he is, um, he's been following me from pretty much day one. One of my patrons, I think he was my first ever patron. And he, uh, he's, he's going to get this because he gets everything that I get that's Yamato, Yamato related. Little breakage there. But you can see here, this is the sides before we put the armor plating on. And we've got the, uh, that's probably part of the back. Is one of our range finders there. Uh, very, very nicely done. This here, I think this is the like the standoff for the uh, armor plating. But, um, you'll know more about this than me. But no interior detail on this one. It's just an external um, sort of curbside model, as it is, if it was a car. And then here we've got two sprues, two identical sprues. The glue strips come off the back. That's handy. Two identical sprues here, and these are obviously our barrels that we've got to put together. And then we've got this railing going around the edges. I can't remember what they're called now. They, they, but they tie themselves onto, aren't they? And then we've got the armour here. The armour belt. Looks like it's flat. We've got to mould that around the part. So get out of some hot water and mould it around. I'm sure they've got to go round. And then we've got those beautifully fine, really, really finely moulded um, tubes there, which, are, which go between the blast bags. Very nice indeed. We can see the moulding on there is... And those ladders is lovely really nicely done very crisp very clean and very big where's the opening on this bag there we go i'm sure some of you would like me to see me open the bags before i do the video but i'd rather do it 
all in one. The, the, the glue on strips are coming off the bags. So we've got the centre one there. And then we've got some more moulded railings here. And then this is this is going to be all the interior structure of the um, of the gun because there's no detail on it as such. I'm guessing these are for the range finders. And there's those big. I hope they get that detail in there. That oh, they've moulded it. When you look at it, it looks like it's ridges around there, but it's not. It's actually moulded as it's like a wall. I wonder how they moulded that. But uh, that looks absolutely great. It's going to pick up a wash and look lovely. And then here we've got the was. Look at the last sprue. Just folded over about a million times. Where's the end of that? I don't need to open this one. That's the catwalk for the back. It's beautifully moulded with all the holes in there. We've got the railing going there for the back. And then we've got parts here of our mast in the bag there. So they're very nice. Very nicely done. I don't need to worry, but you're going to see a build of this very soon, so don't worry about it. And then we've got the roof here. This is the upper part of the turret. You can see all the lovely big fat rivet detail on there, which is very, very nice, very strong, very thick plastic. And then here we've got the base. Like the, Jess will think she's got a dog bowl there. It's massive. It's like, what diameter is that? That is 200 mil, eight inches. So uh, that's big. It's going to make a beautiful model, this one, because it's going to be sort of tall. It's going to be as, as tall as it is, is wide, you know. That's the base part of the, um, or part of the roof of the turret, sorry. And then here we've got the rest of the base. I'll get this out because this is two parts, one inside the other. And there we are. That's lovely, isn't it? Very nice indeed. Quite sure that's, is that going to go like that? Yeah, that's going to go like that, and then the turret is going to sit on top of there. So um, yeah, it's going to use a lot of grey paint, but I'll have to get on to Ed and get some more LP12 because I'll be running out with this. Blimey! So there we are, guys. That's it. That is the Tacom one thirty-fifth scale, <laughs> huge secondary turret for Yamato. So as I said, get, go get yourself one. I know James will. James Moore will have one and it will be reviewed on his channel next week. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all soon. And um, keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in Yamato stuff. There will be a build of this very, very shortly. Bye for now.